Hello, my name is Guy Wallace. I'm sorry, but your SMEs don't know what they're talking about. Literally. According to the research, in traditional task analysis, experts miss up to 70% of what a novice needs to perform. An alternative to your analysis approach might be cognitive task analysis. Cognitive task analysis has been explored by Dr. Richard E. Clark, Dick Clark, at the University of Southern California and the Center for Cognitive Technologies. I would recommend that you investigate their research findings for adapting to your situation. They use cognitive task analysis to capture expert knowledge and skills for research and for instructional design. Cognitive task analysis extends traditional task analysis and captures information about both the overt observable behaviors and the covert cognitive behaviors to form an integrated whole, a complete picture of what a novice needs in order to perform. 70 to 90 percent of knowledge is procedural, automated. It's not conscious. Your experts are actually unaware of what they know in order to do. Analysis of 25 years of research indicates that the best instruction contributes only an average of 20 percent to the increase in performance post-instruction. Our mental capacity is limited to three to four items at once, not the seven plus or minus two that we used to think of in the past. Cognitive task analysis is an interviewing strategy for capturing how highly successful people perform complex tasks. It's not needed for every task that you might need to analyze. Some things are rather straightforward and don't need this level of analysis or this approach to analysis. Cognitive task analysis involves a series of individual interviews and observations. Note there are over 100 approaches to the conduct of CTA, Cognitive Task Analysis, but only six were deemed to be evidence-based and therefore valid. Another alternative for your consideration is the group process approach to analysis. I've been doing this myself since the late 1970s. In November 1984, NSPI, now ISPI's, Performance Improvement Journal, PIJ, published an article by myself and my two business partners on using a group process to create models and matrices. When you're confronted with the difficult task of identifying all of the critical components of knowledge and skills required for your various training target audiences, the group process has been proven by myself and many others on my staff and those that I have trained over the last few decades to really work, to really pull out those key pieces of knowledge and skills. The research shows us that the typical expert only knows about 30% of what it really takes to do the job. The other 70% is automated or non-conscious. But the research also shows us that every expert knows a different 30%. And so by involving many experts via cognitive task analysis or this group process approach, will help you fill in the gaps, help you have the experts fill in the gaps, and confirm the accuracy and completeness as you truly get more accurate and more complete. A free PDF copy of this 1984 article is available on my website in the Resources tab. Check under Free Publications, Chapters, and Articles. 
whereas cognitive task analysis is a series of individual interviews and observations, the group process approach compresses all of that into a group interview. Now this may be done for both analysis and later design, but I have been performing two or three or four day meetings to analyze an entire job or a function or a process or a set of processes. As always, it depends. A one to two day meeting may be all that's required for your situation. Again, as always, it depends. But please, be aware. Warning. Just because a group of experts comes to a consensus on the what and how doesn't make them right. Reviews with others, sometimes called alpha and beta testing, and pilot testing, are also critical to prove them accurate, complete, and appropriate. And just because you can assess this, a level two evaluation in instructional design, doesn't mean that you'll achieve level three transfer. There are many other variables besides what the learner learned in the context of a learning environment and achieved mastery as demonstrated by level two evaluations. Perhaps what they learned wasn't authentic in the first place and won't transfer for that reason. Perhaps management will resist the learner coming back to the job with new knowledge and skills that the managers themselves are unaware of, uncomfortable with, and therefore will wish that the learner go back to the old way of doing things because they know how to manage that. My instructional systems design methodologies are a subset of my performance improvement methodologies. The analysis is very similar, but in the case of performance improvement methodologies, expands beyond the knowledge and skill enablers of performance. I have both EPI and PAC processes. EPI the human performance technology or performance improvement methodologies is all about enterprise process performance improvement and there's two stages to that. My PAC processes are my instructional systems design and they as well have two stages. All four stages of these two methodology sets have a focused effort, a phase, a cycle, that focuses on analysis of the performance requirements and the enablers. Both methodology sets in the actual development of performance improvement interventions or instruction both have a pilot test component. In the group process analysis method we use master performers, other subject matter experts, sometimes novice performers, and sometimes management and supervisory personnel. Facilitation in a group process is really key. It's critical. I have 12 general rules or guidelines for facilitators of the PAC processes. These are documented in many books and articles that I've published and are freely available on my website or as part of books that are now available as paperbacks and Kindles. This was all covered initially in a book published in 1999 that had been under development for almost 15 years at that point. It's available as a 410 page hardbound book, a paperback, or if you prefer a free PDF that you can print out yourself or simply review online at my website in the resources tab. My book was reviewed back in 1999 by several leading gurus in the instructional design and performance improvement field. The late Gary Rumler reviewed my book in 1999. In fact, he didn't like the cover of the book that I had and redesigned it and the cover that you see is the cover that he designed. In 2002, this book was a recipient of an ISPI Award of Excellence in Instructional Communications. 
Mickey Lane also reviewed my book in 1999 and wrote a very nice review for my marketing purposes. Lean ISD and several other books were reconfigured in 2011 into this packed six pack, which also extends into Epi as well in the final book of the series. My book on analysis of performance competence requirements addresses the group process analysis methodology. I also offer formal workshops and less formal coaching sessions and I've been doing this with my own staff since 1982 and developing the staffs of my clients since 1983. Reviews from some of the people who have been through these workshops include this one from Barb from back in the late 90s. Two other clients wrote this about their experiences at two of their companies. These workshops and coaching sessions can run between one and five days in length and can be combined with other content addressing the design of a curriculum architecture and learning paths and the design of instructional solutions along with the analysis that feeds those design efforts. My background can be reviewed on my website at epic.biz. My list of clients and the number of projects and a brief overview of each of the projects I've done with these clients can also be reviewed at my website epic.biz. Contact me if you'd like more information.